Welcome to this video on simple interest. In this video we're going to define the terms that we use with simple interest and the simple interest formula. Given a simple interest problem, we're going to determine the goal and identify the given information and then we're going to use the simple interest formulas to solve for our unknown quantity or quantities. In this series of videos about simple interest, compound interest, and financial math in general, you're going to see some terms and so that you may not you're going to see some terms that you may not be familiar with. So I just wanted to make a, a list here for you. So when we're talking about investments or investment accounts or loans, we might be talking about savings account. These you probably are familiar with. They're just accounts at your banks. Money market, this is a, similar to a savings account, except for it tends to earn slightly higher interest rate. Bonds, these are things that you buy to lend money. You're, what you're doing is you're lending money to either a company or a city or a government, and then they pay you money back at, at interest. Treasury bills, these are similar to bonds. Stocks, here you're buying a share of a company. You might We might be talking about retirement accounts, either a 401k or a pension, or there's other ones too, but these are the two that come up in our problems most frequently. So 401k, this is not a number, this is a another, it's a segment of the law, but don't interpret this as 401,000, it's just a type of retirement account. Stock market indices, you might be looking at the S&P 500. This is a measure of how the top 500 companies in the U.S. are doing, or the NASDAQ, or the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You probably see those on the news. but So that comes up in these problems. A mutual fund, that's where you're buying segments of different types of companies. So it's similar to buying a stock, but instead of buying just one company, you're buying parts of lots of different companies. An index fund, this is just a special type of stock fund that tracks one of these indices, maybe the S&P 500. We might be doing talking about a car loan or a mortgage, which is a home loan, maybe a student loan or a personal loan. Maybe you want a new hot tub, you're going to go and get a loan on that, that would be like a, a personal loan. So all of these types of words are going to come up in the problems that we're going to be doing. It doesn't matter a great deal if you understand you know the specifics of what each of these are, what matters is that you can you can understand what the present value and future value quantities are. Let's take a look at an example. So for instance, Suppose we take out an eight-month $5,000 loan at 10% per year simple interest, and we want to know how much will we owe at the end of the eight months, and how much interest do we pay? So this is the type of problem that we're going to be looking at in this video. Let's look at the formulas that we would need to use to solve this problem. So here's our simple interest formulas. Interest equals our principal or our present value times our interest rate times our time. And I've got down here what each of these quantities represents. So interest, this is the amount of interest that we're earning on our investment. Present value, this is the amount that you start with in the account. So sometimes you see that called principal. Future value, this is the amount that it grows to, or maybe our particular investment depreciates to. And the future value always equals the present value plus the interest, or the growth, or the depreciation, whichever it is. So this formula here, and this formula here, this equals future value. These two formulas are the ones that you're going to use most frequently. The other thing that you need to notice is that our time here is always given in terms of years and the R is always our annual interest rate. So let's go back to that problem that we first posted. So here we are again at this problem. Again, we take out an eighth month $5,000 loan at 10% per year simple interest. And our goal is to figure out how much we owe at the end of the eight months and how much interest do we pay. So let's look at this first question here. We want to know how much do we owe how much do we owe at the end of the eight months. So that means the goal for this question 
is to find the future value. And then looking at the second question, how much interest do you pay? That goal is to find the interest. Okay, now in order to find either of these two quantities, we first need to figure out what information are we given. So let's go back up to the statement of our problem and it says here we take out an eight month $5,000 loan. So this eight months, this gives us a time. So our value, so I'm going to write down my given information here. My value for T is going to be eight twelfths. Now why did I divide by twelve? Well because our time is always needs to be in years. So since we have eight months, there's twelve months in a year, this is eight twelfths of a year. Next we see this five thousand dollar loan. So we're getting this five thousand dollars and then we're going to have to pay a little bit more than that back. So this five thousand dollars, this is our present value or our principal. The last piece of given information that we're told is that we have a 10% per year loan. So our interest rate is 10%, which we're going to convert to a decimal. So that's going to be 0 0.10. So you can do that by moving the decimal place over two spots. Now let's take our formula here. Let's do this first formula and figure out how much we're going to owe at the end. So if we plug in our present value, that's the 5,000 times 1 plus our interest rate, which is 0 0.10 times 8 twelfths, and you could reduce that 8 twelfths if you wanted to. And if we plug this into our calculator, it would look like this. We'd have 5,000 open a set of parentheses, 1 plus 0.1 times, now I don't need this set of parentheses here, I can just type time, I can just type times 8 divided by 12. And we get our $5,333 and then we're always going to round to the nearest cent, so this goes on like this forever, but the hundredths place, this is the cents. So this is where we're going to round. So our answer here is going to be 5,333.33. So this is how much that we owe at the end of the eight months. So the next question we have to figure out the interest. So we could go back and use this formula right here or we could use the relationship that the present value plus the interest equals my future value and so my interest is my future value minus my present value or it's the amount that we have to pay on top of the five thousand dollars so if we look here if we take our five thousand thirty three and subtract the five thousand we end up with $333.33. So that's how much we owe in the end. Let's look at a second example. In this one, we're told that our investment earns 3% per year in simple interest and is worth $10,000 after nine months. And our goal here is to figure out how much the investment was originally worth. So this $10,000 that I have right here, this includes the growth and we want to know how much it was originally worth. So what we're looking for is how much we started with. In terms of our variables, our goal then is going to be to find my present value. And our given information is, let's see, we're given $10,000, so that is our future value. That's how much we want our investment to be worth at the end of the time period. The next piece that we're given is that 
our investment earns 3% per year, so we know our R is 3% or 0 0.03. And let's see, the last piece of information is we're given that the time period needs to be 9 months. So that's 9 twelfths of a year. So if we look at this, these formulas, we really have several variables that we, we've got going on. We've got future value, we've got present value, we've got R, we have T, and the interest also is another um, variable. And we are given this R, and we're given this T, and we're given the future value, and we're looking for the original investment, so we're looking for this one. So this is what often happens. You're given three of four things and you have to find the fourth. So we've got our formula here. So I can plug in what I know, $10,000 equals my present value times one plus my R, which is 0 .03 times 9 twelfths. And all I need to do is figure out what my present value is. So all I need to do is just divide here. So if I take my 10,000 and divide by 1 plus 0 .03 times 9 twelfths, I'll get the correct answer. Now we have to be careful when we go to enter this into the calculator. Whenever I have more than one thing in that denominator, I need to put parentheses around it. Let's type this into our calculator. So we're going to have 10,000 divided by, open a set of parentheses, 1 plus 0 .03 times 9 divided by 12, close the parentheses, and we get a present value or an initial investment of $9,779 and we're going to round at the nearest cent so that would be at the 5 so we have 95. So how much was originally invested? $9,779.95. In this next problem, we're given a different goal and a different set of information. See if you can use one of these two formulas to find the answer. So if we look at what our statement says here, it says when did the loan mature? This when in this situation indicates the time. So my goal here is to find the value of t. So give this a try. Pause the video and give it a try and then start back up. So did you get t equals 8? Here's my work. Present value is a thousand interest rate is four percent and the amount of interest that gets earned is three hundred and twenty dollars so this three hundred and twenty isn't the future value it's the interest I'm using this version of the formula I could have used this formula but I chose to use this easier one to use in this situation and it's easier because I don't have to calculate the future value uh, by adding the present value and the interest and it's this equation's easier to solve for t than this one is. Plug in the values, divide by the 1000 and the 0 .04 and I get t equals 320 divided by 40 or t equals 8 and remember that t equals 8 that means 8 years so it's really important that you include these units on your numbers. So if we're talking about a dollar amount, you put a dollar sign. If we're talking about years, you put years. If we're talking about an interest rate, you put a percentage sign. Those are important. Let's look at one last problem. So it says to calculate to the nearest 0.01% the annual percentage return on a simple interest basis on Starbucks stock if it was worth $70.29 per share on December 2nd and four months later on April 1st it was worth $79.46 per share. So let's write down what our goal is and what our given information is. So our goal, it says calculate to the nearest 0.01% the annual percentage rate return. So our goal is to find our percentage rate, which is our R. 
our given information. Let's see. We know that Starbucks stock was worth $70.29 per share on December 2nd. That's our starting value. So our present value, our starting value, this is going to be $70.29. Four months later, so this gives us our time. Our time is 4 twelfths. On April 2nd, we don't need to actually know what particular days this was. It was just the fact that it was four months later. We do need to know that it was worth $79.46 per share. So our future value is $79.46. So there's two things that we could do from here. We could calculate the interest. This would be the future value minus the present value. And then if we do that, we would use the formula interest equals present value times R times T. This is probably the easiest way to calculate this, so I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. The other thing we could do is we could use the formula F future value equals present value times 1 plus RT and then solve for R. This is just a little bit more complicated to solve. So the future value minus the present value is the 79 46 minus the 7029. We get nine dollars and seventeen cents. Plugging this into the formula now, we're going to have nine dollars and seventy seventeen cents equals our present value was 7029 times our R times our T, which is four twelfths, or let's reduce that. That is going to be one third. And we need to solve for R. So we want to get this R all by itself. So we have to do two things. We have to get rid of this 7029. So I can do that by dividing. And then I also need to get rid of this one third. And one way to get rid of the one third is to divide by one third, but that ends up being a little clunky in terms of entering things into your calculator and it just looks kind of um, visually hard to, to read. So another option would be to multiply both sides by three. So I have R equals three times nine dollars and seventeen cents over seventy twenty nine. Plug this into the calculator. I get th 3 times 9.17 divided by 70.29 and I get 0 0.39137857455 equals my R. So if we go back to our original statement, they said we need to round to the nearest 0.01%. So we're not going to round until after we convert this to a percentage. So if I write that as a percentage, it looks like 39.13785745%. And so if I isolate where they want us to round, they want us to round to that 0.01%. So that's at this 3. So my answer here is 39.14%. So the simple annual interest rate is going to be 39.14%. So that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful.